In humans, as well as many other diploid organisms, a process known as crossing over can take place. Now, crossing over takes place during meiosis, and that means crossing over occurs when we form gametes, sex cells. Now, what exactly is the purpose, what's the importance of crossing over? Well, as we'll see in just a moment, crossing over allows us to produce sex cells, it allows us to produce gametes that carry genetic information that is slightly different than genetic information found inside our somatic cells. And that's exactly why I, for example, don't look exactly like either of my parents. And that's exactly why I have my own set of unique fingerprints. It's because crossing over allows those gametes to obtain genetic information that is unique to that specific sex cell. Now, in our discussion of crossing over, we're going to focus on a type of organism we call the fruit fly. Now, in fruit flies, we're going to study two different traits. We're going to examine the structure of the wings, and we're going to discuss the color trait of that fruit fly. Now, in fruit flies, we have two types of wings that can form. We have normal wings and we have vestigial wings. Likewise, we have two different types of colors. We have the gray color and we have black color. Now, it turns out that normal wings that we're going to designate with blue uppercase V is dominant over the recessive vestigial wing, which we're going to designate with purple lowercase v. And by the same token, the color gray is dominant over the color black. So the color gray we're going to designate with red uppercase b, and the color black we're going to designate with orange lowercase b. Now, the normal wings and our color, or the wing gene and the color gene are linked to one another. And what that basically means is they are found on the same exact chromosome. So to see what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram. So this is basically a homologous chromosome pair. And what that basically means is one of these chromosomes came from the male parent and the other chromosome <clears throat> came from the female parent. And both of these chromosomes carry genes that code for the protein that expresses the same type of trait. Now notice along each one of these chromosomes, let's suppose along the darker green chromosome, we have two genes. And this red gene is linked to the blue gene in the same exact way that this orange gene is linked to the purple gene. So whenever two or more genes are found on the same chromosome, they are said to be linked to one another. So this gene right here, uppercase V, is linked to this here, uppercase B, while this is linked to this right over here. Now let's suppose that this particular uh, fruit fly that has this homologous chromosome pair wants to produce gametes. So it wants to undergo reproduction and that means it wants to produce gametes. And the first step in producing gametes is to replicate the DNA during interphase. So once we replicate the DNA, we form the following two homologous chromosomes. So now, in, now instead of having a single chromatid, we have two cystochromatids. So these two, so this is a cystochromatid to this. And because DNA replication produces identical pieces of chromosome, that means these two are identical chromosomes. By the same exact analogy, this is identical to this. So these two are cystochromatids with respect to one another. So these two are cystochromatids, these two are cystochromatids. Now, these, with respect to one another, are homologous chromosomes in the, same way, in, in, in the same way that these two were homologous chromosomes up here. But now, once DNA replication took place, we form these two identical pairs 
of cystochromatin. So these are identical to one another, these are identical to one another, but these are different with respect to one another. But we call them homologous because they still carry those genes that code for the same exact trait. So we have the wing structure and the color and the wing structure and the color trait. So we know that during meiosis one, in our discussion on meiosis one, we said that during prophase one of meiosis, we have a process known as synapses taking place. So the synapses is basically the intertwining of the chromosomes. And when the chromosomes intertwine, when they overlap onto one another, we have crossing over taking place. And what crossing over is, it's the exchange of genetic information of chromosomal pieces among two non-cystochromatids. So remember, these two are cystochromatids with respect to one another. These two are cystochromatids with respect to one another. But this one here and this one here are non-cystochromatids. That's because they are not identical to one another. Now, when crossing over actually takes place, we form genetically different chromosomes. We form recombinant chromosomes. So once again, during meiosis one, synapses between the homologous non-cystochromatids. So let's say this one right here and this one right here takes place and that allows the exchange of genetic information in a process known as crossing over and that produces genetically recombinant chromosomes. So basically during prophase one of meiosis, these two homologous chromosomes that have been replicated basically approach one another. And now this right here can basically overlap with this right here and when this interlapping or overlapping takes place this is known as synapsis so we have this overlaps onto this right over here now when the overlapping takes place then we can exchange in the process known as crossing over and this dark green piece that came from this here goes onto the light green piece onto this chromatid right over here. And likewise, this lighter green section of the chromosome that came from this homologous chromosome goes on to this. At the end, we form the following, uh, the following pair of homologous chromosomes in which this is no longer identical to this and this is no longer identical to this. And at this point, we call these recombinant chromatids. Why? Well, because none of these are actually identical, as in the case of this, where this one was identical to this, and this one was identical to this. Now, each one of these are genetically unique. So this is basically what happens during prophase one of meiosis. Now, let's fast forward to metaphase one of meiosis. During metaphase one of meiosis, these recombinant chromosomes basically align along the equator, along the midsection of that particular somatic cell. So this is the midsection and this homologous but recombinant chromosome pair have now aligned itself along the equator and now a process known as segregation will take place. So these will basically separate onto opposite poles, eventually cytokinesis will produce two different cells. And this is the reduction step where we go from the 2N number to the N number of chromosomes. Now let's suppose now we fast forward to metaphase 2 of meiosis. During metaphase 2 of meiosis, each one of these individual chromosomes will basically now align itself once again along the equator and the same segregation process will take place. So the mitotic spindle will attach itself onto these chromosomes pulling them apart and eventually we form these four gametes as shown in the following diagram. 
Now notice in each one of these gametes, each one of these gametes we have a slightly different genetic information and that is because of the process of crossing over. So when crossing over actually took place, we exchanged genetic information. Notice that in this case, we had uppercase V, uppercase B, and uppercase V, uppercase B, okay? But when genetic recombination, when crossing over took place, we have uppercase V, uppercase B, uppercase V, and now we have a lowercase B. And so that's exactly what makes this one different than this chromosome right over here. And that's exactly why we produce these two gametes. So this gamete is genetically different than this gamete. Now, if no crossing over actually took place, then these two gametes would be identical because this piece of information would never have been exchanged in the first place. And if no crossing over took place, this would be identical to this. By the same exact reasoning, if we examine this cell right over here, when these separate to opposite poles, cytokinesis takes place, we form these two gametes, and these are genetically different from one another because of this process of crossing over. So in this case, we had lowercase v, lowercase b, lowercase v, lowercase b, and these were identical sister chromatids. But now, after crossing over, this right over here is uh, lowercase v, but this is uppercase b, because of crossing over. Now, this is still lowercase b and lowercase v, but this chromatid here is no longer identical to this chromatid here, a uh, chromatid here. And so that means these two will be different, and so when they segregate, they produce slightly different gametes. So this gamete will contain a slightly different genetic information, slightly different chromosome than this one right here. But if no crossing over took place, we would form two identical chromosomes, lowercase b, lowercase v, and lowercase b, lowercase v. Instead, because we do have, cro uh, we do have crossing over that takes place, we form one lowercase b, one lowercase v, and the other one is uh, uppercase b, lowercase v. So this is exactly what we mean by the process of crossing over. So we see that crossing over allows diploid organisms such as human beings to basically produce these sex cells, these gametes that have slightly different genetic information than the actual parent, than the parent or the, uh, than the female or the male parent. Because remember, this chromosome came from the male parent and this chromosome came from the female parent. If no genetic recombination in the form of crossing over took place, then the gametes that we would form at the end, these gametes here, would be exactly identical to the gametes that came from the parents, the male and the female. But because of crossing over, we form these gametes that are slightly different. And that means we're going to form individuals, our offspring will be genetically unique and genetically different than our own somatic cells.